Hey everyone, this is Paul, SouthP24 on Instagram, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a 6-inch soft goods, super articulated Bosque action figure. I've always loved the Hasbro Black Series Boss, but I found that he suffered from some articulation issues. Here are a couple of shots I've taken of Bosque, but I've always been frustrated with the limited posing, so it was finally time for an upgrade. The ultimate Bosque figure that we'll be working on maintains all those fantastic elements of the Hasbro sculpt and the face and the feet, but adds all the missing articulation that will take Bosque to the next level. The final result is a figure that scales very well with the Black series. So whether he's standing casually on your display shelf or you're getting him into a dynamic sniper pose for a toy photo, this really should be the last 112 scale boss you'll need in your collection. To complete this project, you'll need the original Hasbro Bosk plus another slim, well articulated figure. I like the one from Mix Max, but you could also use a slim Marvel Legends body. You'll need some basic sewing skills to complete this project, but I do recommend just buying something like this yellow jumpsuit, which I found on eBay. But other options include a Ghostbusters jumpsuit or this one on the right, which came from a 3A action figure. For the most part, we're going to use a boil and pop method to take the original boss figure apart. But there's four places on his chest and the tube in the side, and then where the two harnesses meet his belt in the back, where we're going to have to use a knife to carefully cut those away so that we can remove all the parts. I typically use the boil and pop method for taking apart a figure, so you just let it sit for about 30 seconds in hot water. Be careful not to burn your fingers when you take it out. And the figure will have loosened up enough so that the joints and the head should be able to come out easily. It's important to never force a joint if it's not coming free. You can always heat it a little bit more, it'll get softer, and then you should be able to pop it. Uh, there are some joints on Hasbro Black Series figures that will not work with a boil and pop. And in those cases, uh, you do need to crack the body, but we don't need to do that for this particular project. The torso joint here is the one where you really want to make sure it's been heated up enough, as on most Black Series figures, it tends to be the hardest one to break apart. To maintain that classic look for Bosque, we're going to be hollowing out that top portion of the flight suit to essentially envelop or wrap around the new articulated body. I start by carefully cutting into it at the shoulder joint, and then I'm going to work with my Dremel to start hollowing out from the bottom of the torso. The Dremel has a tendency to kind of jump or skip on you, uh, like it just did there. So you just want to work slowly and, and just keep removing material until you've hollowed out the inside of that chest. The end result's going to look something like this. It's essentially like a vest that's going to wrap over your blank, super articulated body. Now we're moving on to the arms and we're hollowing out the elbow joint. So it's going to act like a sleeve over the existing arm. The best approach is to keep dremeling bit by bit until you're comfortable with how it fits over the elbow joint. Because I'm using the Mix Max body here, it means that the original Bosque legs will actually fit perfectly onto that calf joint. Uh, it's possible if you're using a Marvel Legends figure, you might need to cut down that calf halfway so that the two pieces will match. Ultimately, I'm going to be gluing those limbs together, but this is just a quick test fit to make sure everything's working. You'll notice that I've actually shaved down the chest a little bit so that the Bosque vest fits over top. And here he is with the yellow jumpsuit and the white vest over top. It's always good to do these test fittings occasionally to make sure everything's working well. An optional step here is to swap out his right hand. I'm using a Marvel Legends flesh colored hand. And the reason I'm doing it is because I really wanted Bosque to be able to get into that two handed sniper pose. The challenge with this step is really that it's gonna be hard to find another three fingered alien hand. So what I'm doing is I cut out the ring finger and then I'll use epoxy putty to fuse the other ones together. If you have this Black Series figure, you know that the working jaw, the mouth, is one of the coolest features. So I'm attaching it to the Mix Max neck while maintaining that articulation. The first step is to cut away the peg, and then I'm gonna be using my Dremel again to hollow out the inside, and you need to be careful so you don't damage the edges, so go slowly. 
And just like we did with the arms, we're going to remove enough so that it can slide over the existing part and ultimately we'll glue those together. Time for a quick test fit. I'm going to slide the white vest over top. You still have access to the ball joint and it should be an easy pop in and while maintaining full articulation. With the body prepped, it's time for painting. Uh, this could be an optional step because the original Hasbro parts do look good, but for me, I think it's essential if you want to take him to the next level. For me, the first step is called a flesh wash from Vallejo. You apply it liberally, then you're going to let it sit, and then you're just gently wiping away that top surface. You can see I'm also putting a little bit of black in the crevices of the toes and around the nails, and that just adds some weathering. And of course, we're going to repeat the process around the hands, the fingernails, and into the head, definitely into the mouth as well, which will really bring out those teeth and tongue. The hardest part of any custom figure is painting eyes. Um, I'm going to be using a clear orange to go over the original. Let that dry, and then I'm going to come back with a gloss gun metal for the pupil. Two tips for this. First of all, I'm using a 20-0 brush, which is the smallest one I could find at my local hobby store. And the other thing is I do recommend some sort of magnifying lens or glasses when working at this scale. The final step in the paint job is to do a dry brush. I'm getting a slightly lighter color tone, which is a combination of Kislev Flesh and Yellow Ochre. And with a very, very small amount of paint on your brush, you're just gently wiping over all those textured parts to just bring out more detail. You're wiping off almost all the paint from your brush. And it's a very subtle step, but you can see how much of an impact it has bringing out the scales uh, and all those little crevices and details in the sculpt. So if you think about the steps we've had with this paint job, the darker flesh wash settles into all those nooks and crannies, and then that's accentuated by this lighter dry brush that brings out all those details. So it's the balance of dark and light. Onto my least favorite step of this project, which is the sewing. I didn't show it here, but I had already tapered the sides of the suit, so it'd be a little bit more fitted against the torso and along the arms. So depending on the base figure you use and the jumpsuit that you end up finding, it's going to be a different experience. But the goal really was maintain full articulation and end up with a bodysuit that was a little bit more fitted to the figure. To attach the vest, I'm actually going to use elastic straps and then glue the vest onto that so the whole piece can move somewhat freely over the body. Make sure that you have full clearance for the neck peg. Use a small amount of glue and try and only get it on the vest and on the elastic straps. All right, on to one of the most interesting sections of this project, which is doing the straps. You can reuse a lot of the plastic straps on the boss figure, but I'm choosing to use this elastic strapping to create more of that soft goods feel. All the hoses and belts on boss are such an important part of what creates that look. And I find if you use something like these elastics and they'll hang a little bit more naturally, just be careful with your glue to make sure it's only getting on the straps and not the outfit. For the thigh straps, you're starting with a small piece that loops through the crotch. Then you're basically creating two loops that will wrap around the thighs. And again, glue only on the straps. For a lot of these pieces, you'll notice I'm leaving them long, establishing the length, and then cutting the strap. This way you know you'll have the right lengths and everything's going to hang properly. When the thigh pieces are done, you can see they're kind of free floating, but they're looped through that crotch piece so they won't actually fall off. All right, onto the belt. Um, I decided to just reuse the plastic belt in this case because I thought the, the buckle had some nice detail. So all I did was cut it free uh, using my X-Acto knife and then I'm gluing it so that it still is kind of free floating and not attached to any of the straps or any other parts of the body. That way it's not going to hinder articulation. Time to attach the hoses. And once again for these, it was just most straightforward to reuse the parts from the Hasbro figure. Plus I thought they were kind of cool. 
Uh, they attach in three places. You're going to be gluing them back to the chest and where they originally connected to the back of the belt. I'd recommend a very small amount of glue and again being careful not to get it on any parts of the jumpsuit. For the legs, um, again because I use that Mix Max body, the legs do match pretty good with that peg on the figure, but I'm still going to use a small amount of glue just to make sure that they're set in place and there's no um, like kind of wobble in the stance. If you had used a Marvel Legends figure, it's possible the joint would still match well. Uh, but either way, I'm using a small amount of glue and I'm carefully tucking the leg of the jumpsuit in behind those um, leg pouches just so that you don't see the rough edge and everything's still moving freely. Onto the arms. Uh, if you remember, we've hollowed out the inside of that joint, so they should match up quite well. Uh, key thing is just to make sure you don't get any glue onto the fabric so everything's still moving freely. And at the same time, you don't want to get any excess glue into the elbow joint and risk that it gets seized up. As a finishing touch, I'm taking this black elastic strapping and I'm just carefully attaching it around um, where the plastic meets the fabric jumpsuit. It'll just make more of a finished edge and hide any like awkward seams. I said it before, but as a recommendation, because you're, you're gluing around joints, as it sets, I just kind of keep the elbows moving and make sure I, nothing gets seized up on me. We're just about into the final details here. And one of those things we haven't touched yet is Bosk's blaster. I use a natural steel and I'm using a mahogany brown to add a little bit of details to what is otherwise a very plain Hasbro blaster. Often Hasbro doesn't put any paint on the weapons, so I tend to do a steel dry brush, and in this case, a wooden tone on the shoulder stock. Into the final details, and we're gonna go rapid fire. We got some natural steel paint going on that chest plate. Then I'm gonna use my oiled earth wash. I use this on so many custom applications. In this case, I'm letting it set into that white vest, all those crevices, and then I'll come back with a paper towel and just kind of dab some of it away. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna just dirty up that jumpsuit just a touch. Again, this is dry brushing on top of the fabric. And the final details of a black to clean up some of the piping around the vest that got a bit damaged as I was working on the project. And the final one being a burnt red to uh, touch up the hose that runs from the back of the vest around to the front. And then also the collar around his neck, uh, just to freshen it up and give it a consistent red color. And the absolute final step is a glossy satin sealer which I'll use on his eyes to make them uh, pop with a little bit of shimmer. And in this case, because Bosk has that cool mouth, um, we'll get a little bit along the tongue and his teeth just to give it a little bit more of a wet look. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this tutorial. We now have our 112 Ultimate Boss figure, complete articulation in the legs, the knees, elbow, and shoulder joints beyond 45 degree while maintaining a nice swivel on the neck up down and the working jaw. My main goal when I set out to do this project was uh, superior articulation and I could not be happier with how much dynamic posing you can do with Bosk or he still looks great just standing there badass like he's on the bridge of the Star Destroyer uh, with his other bounty hunter buddies and of course a two-handed blaster grip which was impossible to do with the original Hasbro figure, and now you can make them look really menacing for those toy photos. With any custom project, it's all about the details. Adding the metallic paint to the blaster, and the way we made the skin and the scales really pop by using a darker flesh wash, and then coming back over it with the lighter dry brush just created such good contrast. For me, I really wanted the two-handed blaster grip so we can get into a sniper pose, and that was one more thing that just makes Boss come to life. Our ultimate Boss figure won't just look good on the shelf, he's going to look amazing in toy photos. Be sure to check me out on Instagram, at SouthP24. Follow the link down below to check out my page. Of course, subscribe here on YouTube, and please leave your questions and comments. It's not the most straightforward project, but the little bit of work 
you can make this ultimate Bosque part of your own collection. So once again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.